everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'm going to be sharing psychic wisdom and energy healing for a client. I want to thank the client so much for the opportunity to work with you. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. If any of you are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one through a psychic session, we can do it privately or share it here on YouTube. Um, please visit my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right, I'm going to read your goals and then I'm going to get started. So you say, I would like to work with my spirit guides to heal my destructive thoughts. Okay. Hmm. That's a really good goal. Okay. I feel like I'm having to prepare for this. Like something feels like a blank slate, not necessarily a reset button or a fresh new start. It's almost like we're missing some pieces of the puzzle. I feel like there may be some things in the forefront here as we work our way towards those destructive thoughts. And I want to get right into the destructive thoughts. So I'm just kind of hearing this one out. I'm just sensing this one out here. Also, I want to create a space where we're bringing in your spirit guides. It feels like you want to hear from your spirit guides. Maybe we need to work on really, really getting to the next level of letting them into your system. <laughs> so I'm going to start there. And I'm kind of removing a squishy layer from your aura. And then I'm seeing that your spirit guides are full of colors. And then I'm bringing them into your energy field. And it's like the concept that you know, ogres have layers. They're like onions and onions have layers. <laughs> I don't know what's coming to mind here. And so we're removing a layer from your onion <laughs> and we're going to let some colorful spirit guides in here. And one of them represents a white squirrel. And it's more of a grayish white than like an albino white. They seem to have black eyes with a grayish white fur. I think of snow, I think of snow squirrel, snow squirrel. <laughs> I want to see how you feel about snow squirrel. You're blank, you're blank about it. You're, you're not giving us any feedback exactly. You're okay with s snow squirrel, but you're not, um, yes, snow squirrel. Or <laughs> you're just like, okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Oh, I see. The next image that comes to me is, um, you guys ever go to, you know what I'm talking about? Like a, a motivational speaker. And then a motivational speaker is uh, welcoming everybody to get excited about today. Um, are you excited about today? Yeah, yeah, we're excited. No, I can't hear you. Are you excited about today? Yeah, we're excited. No, no, no. Are you excited about today? All right. Yes, we are excited about today. Okay. And so I feel like we're going to have to like raise the roof here on your excitement levels of your heart because Snow Squirrel is here and <laughs> we need to raise the roof for Snow Squirrel. Okay. <laughs> I need you to get excited <laughs> about Snow Squirrel. <laughs> okay, let's see. You're, you're just like one of those people that's like rolling your eyes like, okay, whatever. Yes, I'm excited. You kind of 
are okay with it. It's just you don't want to give all that much right now. Because you don't have to. And you shouldn't have to to be good enough. You just want to have a real chat. You don't want to um, create energy and create excitement when you're not actually not necessarily excited or not excited. You're just kind of like a neutral, accepting kind of monotone right now. Mm. I see that snow squirrel is dying on the inside. And I can see the bones now. And you still feel quite monotone about it. Is this a negative thought thing? Is this like destructive thoughts? You're killing snow squirrel right now with your attitude. Your monotone neutral attitude is killing snow squirrel. You need to snap out of this. Yeah, there, there really is deep down inside of you something that tries to give off the effect of being too cool to care. I don't have to care, whatever. It's kind of... It feels like you're pretending, though, if you were to act like that. It would just be kind of absurd. All right, so Snow Squirrel's officially dead now. <laughs> and he's pretty, like, nonchalant, like... It's not my fault. I mean, I don't know what Snow Squirrel's issue is. I don't know why he's getting all skinny and drying up inside or whatever. If I don't feel like getting excited, I'm just not going to get excited. It's not whatever that is, that's Snow Squirrel's thing. That's not my thing. Okay. Hmm. And Snow Squirrel turns to dust, and then I collect the dust, like collecting ashes of a deceased loved one in a tiny little box. And then I, it's actually in a locket. And then I put the locket around your neck so that you can remember Snow Squirrel. <laughs> you, you don't want to remember. I say, why not, though? You can say I didn't ask for Snow Squirrel all day long, but Snow Squirrel came. You can say that all day long, but Snow Squirrel came. And so some part of you did ask for this. And maybe you need to embrace what you asked for. Maybe you need to acknowledge it, that you wanted this. That's why you crossed paths. And now it's beneath you to recognize this. Being even get to know why it even came. It's beneath you and to wear the locket that we remember Snow Squirrel by. It's beneath you. Which tells me that you're a long ways down. And you're, you're having a hard time with this. Because you need, to, you need to bring the feeling of life back in your heart. As corny and cheesy as it can be, it can be wonderful too. Imagine being a kid again and how the first time you ever heard somebody do that, it made you laugh and then you were like, yay, I get to be louder. Okay, we're going to get louder. You know, it's like, yay, I'm a kid. I can be loud. You know, it felt so good. And then you became an adult and you're just like a, I don't know. Immobile. <laughs> You're stuck in place. <laughs> you need to grease the hinges. <laughs> it's like you need to remember what made you happy. What got you excited. Was it cheesy or corny for a kid to get excited about the motivational speaker telling you to get louder? It didn't make sense. Then why would that make sense to a kid and it would not make sense to an adult? Adults to... Uh, Grown up for that stuff, I guess. You're not going to let your childlike self come out either. Because I try to bring out, well, let's see what the inner child would do and with this snow squirrel. 
but then you you really get really tight and snug and you're not going to you're not going to even give a little bit you're like a tight rubber band if you gave a little bit maybe you'd snap maybe you'd break um, I'm um, challenging you right now. That that is just like your your dried up rubber band. Your dried up rubber bands are useless rubber bands. They're weak rubber bands. So you're the weakest of all the rubber bands, and nobody'd really want you. Actually, you're not that great. You're pretty much the worst rubber band. You should be in the trash. You should be in the landfill. We don't need useless rubber bands like you. How come that motivates you more? Why in the world would that motivate you more? You feel more alive when I talk to you like that. And what's interesting is the scene is changing and now we're in a, um, like an alleyway. I'm starting to see like um, Double Dragon, the game, like, I don't know, it's like some Nintendo game and we're going to town and we're going to fight, you know. I, I feel like there's a brawl going on here. It's like a Michael Jackson music video where we're, you know, the tough people and we can dance fight and stuff. But there's real, I mean, there's real <sighs> bruised faces and cuts and blood and broken noses and everything. So it's a real brawl, but it feels playful at the same time. But it's kind of disturbing how far this is going. I have this memory of, I think it's called Double Dragon. And I played this with my friend. And the reason why we played it so much is because we like beating each other up. It was like who could beat each other who could beat up the other faster. And the the point of the game isn't necessarily to beat up your teammate. It's is to get through the levels with your teammate, but you happen to have the ability to beat your teammate up. And so it's like this play fighting thing. But so there's the element of like we're having fun, we're play fighting, we're um but it's actually looking quite disturbing. I feel um, razor blades and slicing of one's identity. I mean, I see there's the human. Human is a face forward. But in another version, you can't see this version though. I see a razor blade cuts through the front um, layer of the human. So they have no front part of their body. They have nothing at their as their face forward. But it's not just once. It's like three or four times, okay? But I still see the human. And you, you, boy, you're like a rock here. You're not wanting to loosen or lighten up. You're very, very stiff. Okay. Right now I'm just like I'm just touching your energy field and what I'm doing is generating gentle vibrations and ripples because those ripples can loosen things up, okay? They can loosen up the stiff rubber band, okay? And it's like anybody who does yoga can become flexible and, and have the, their joints working better again. And something about stretching and the blood flow and the time that we're investing energetically into our bodies. And when the rubber band becomes stiff, it needs time invested into itself. It needs to stretch itself. And I'm wondering if it's like, what kind of emotional stretch are we lacking here? This isn't necessarily about, you, you can say it's destructive thoughts, but it, I still feel like I'm trying to put my finger on it exactly, but 
this is where we're at with it so far. Okay, let's see what, what other colors have come in here. What other spirit guides want to help? Okay, there is supposed to be a blue jay, but it emanates a red aura. Okay, it's a blue jay with a red aura. And sometimes it looks red, and it's not a cardinal. It says it's a blue jay, and then it has a red aura, but then sometimes it actually looks red. And, and then I kind of like making a statement like, can you make up your mind? Are you red? Are you blue? What are you? And it's not me. It's this thing. It can't make up its mind. But maybe it's just that way. Maybe that's the way it is. It says it doesn't like the red aura. That's what it says. And then it doesn't like being red either, but it can't just be blue. And then it shows me that if it was green, it wouldn't really like green, so it's going to just stay with being blue. But then when it's blue, it has a red aura, and then it tries to get rid of the red aura, and it becomes part of the feathers, and it just doesn't work. So it just, then it's a blue, blue jay with red aura. Like, it can't really make things the way that it wants them to be. So it's trying to be happy with what it, as close as it could get to that. You're not listening to your inner selves. Your inner selves, your inner voices are guiding you. They're the spirit guides that your spirit guides are wanting to tell you about. So I asked this blue jay what it doesn't like about the red. He says, oh, it's just not me. And I say, well, obviously it is you. It isn't going anywhere. It's a part of you. He says that it's um, not the way that he wants to be. It's not how he wants to express himself, it's not... I'm kind of asking, is it as simple as I shouldn't have been born with curly hair, I should have been born with straight hair, or maybe instead of having blonde hair, I should have had black hair, and you know, is it something like this, or is it something maybe you developed in your personality, maybe it shouldn't have been like that, but because of the way you were raised, something like this, um, it became part of who you are and you'd like to change that. So I'm trying to get a feel for what this red represents. Is it something we need to just accept? It, it is the way that it is? Or is it something that we, we can actually transform? Like I'd say that this bird is too picky. This bird needs to stop being so picky. And they say very bluntly that um, until the bird is happy with the way things are is... Um, nothing's going to change. And then they present that, that language to the bird and it can't hear a word they said. It doesn't want to hear the truth. It just wants to keep focusing on trying to change something that can't be changed. And the last thing it wants to do is be happy with the way things are because it refuses to be happy with the way things are. All right, there's a new scene about this bird, and it is very weird. I mean, I'm looking at a strange, I want to say, gnome-type being. A really oversized face, um, perfectly rosy cheeks, kind of goofy teeth for some reason. It seems to be a pointy hat, but the hat's not on his head. I just feel like he looks like a gnome. But he doesn't have a beard either. Something very... Um, kind of cute and adorable and, and gnome-like about his appearance. Like I could see him being a yard um, ornament. But he doesn't have his hat and instead it's kind of like broken on his head and there's... I mean it's gonna cut my skin. It's gonna cut my hand. And it's, it's like broken red. 
and it's supposedly hair. And I feel like it's supposed to have a blue hat and it doesn't have its hat because it got broken off and in its place is, I guess, a bloody broken top of his head. And I, and I say, okay, then how does this compute? I say um, to him, I say, well, my guides are telling me you need to just embrace things the way they are. Uh, yeah, they're showing me that I'll never find his hat and I'll never be able to glue it back on and we're not going there. Hmm. Like some things are meant to break and they're meant to be gone forever. That uh, one thing that you cherished was your hat. Now it's broken. Now it's gone forever. What are you going to do about it? Cry about it? It's like you're going to have to embrace the way you've changed. You're going to have to embrace the way that you are different now. And you see that this is um, deterrent, like the way that you are is broken and you need to try to cover that up. You need to try to fix this. You need to try to go back the way that you used to be. No, uh -uh. you need to expose yourself for all those broken pieces. You know what this reminds me of too? Every time I buy a new pair of tennis shoes, you know those things are going to get dirty and they're never going to be new. Like even this white sweater, it's going to get dog hair on it. It's going to probably get chocolate spilt on it eventually. Like stuff happens. It's never going to be brand spanking new. And I had this conversation with my guides once like anything that I buy new is never going to stay new. And then I have to replace it with new because I really like new things instead of like used old things. And they're like, well, why would you like new things? And when things that are older have more personality. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, so maybe I need to appreciate the dirt on my shoes and my dirt on my clothes or... <laughs> so I'm, I'm like having this conversation with them and it kind of reminds me of this on some basic level, okay? It's like maybe you need to embrace how you've gone from new to old and, and love yourself for what's broken along the way that you can't replace it because the way that you are now is irreplaceable. The way that you are now is irreplaceable. It's almost like the story of who you are is in how you are today. What you need to do is let go of who you once were. It's almost like you're trying to catch up with the past and you need to live completely and utterly in the present because it's almost like Maybe these destructive thoughts are you not being able to achieve a goal, which maybe it's catching up with um, something you liked about yourself at another time and you're trying to recreate that. But really, you need to just embrace who you are today. And maybe that, that's the thought, well, who's going to want this me? It's like, who wants a pair of dirty old sneakers? Like, <laughs> My guides are telling me I do, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're saying okay about my shoes and my sweater and stuff <laughs> okay so we're gonna go back to what is like a bloody broken porcelain top of your head okay like you your your gnome hat is gone and you're all bloody and broken on top okay and it's not nice to move my hand across here because it cuts my hand then my hand bleeds onto your head which is like bleeding and it's really freaky and you you got a creepy kind of happy face on and a brutally abused head and it doesn't seem to mix and kind of creeping me out now this is weird this is what comes up i i give you the um memory of snow squirrel and it makes you cry, actually, because at one time in your life, you could have celebrated something and instead you just chose to be like a big doofus about it, like too cool to, um, to give in to that, like kind of eye rule scenario. And now you wish you, you could be that, that person because you would do it differently this time. And you can't bring back the past. When the past is dead, it's dead. 
You can't bring Snow Squirrel back. Seems to be some part of yourself that was trying to get your attention, but you were just too stubborn. You're too... You just... You just weren't going to celebrate life because you're too cool for that. I mean, it seemed like this. And now we gotta accept that Snow Squirrel's dead and you've got a broken head, basically. And so no wonder you have negative thoughts. Because this is unresolved emotion in you. It hasn't really been evaluated and this is deep stuff. So I'm not sure if you you would be aware of it at the conscious level as what it truly is. It could come up as something that, you know, is negative thoughts, but it's actually the suffering of this unresolved in the subconscious world, okay? And maybe it's familiar. I will say this broken head is a big deal. I don't even know what to make of it. It's starting to look more human and more... And so porcelain is, it is very disturbing because it's kind of a mix between porcelain and skin and it's bloody and it's not fixable and it feels like very creepy to look at it. Like there's no solution, there's no fix to this and we can't live with it and we have to live with it but we can't live with it and now it's starting to bring us back to the blue bird with the red aura. I don't want to live with it, but I have to live with it. I try not to have to live with it, and then I have to live with it. And My guides tell me to be happy the way things are. Embrace the way things are. It, 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 it degrades you. It defiles you. It's, you can't be happy with the way things are because it defiles you. It's, I know that feeling too. I don't know if it's in the exact same way, but you ever have circumstances that this would be a defiling thing where that, that is almost unacceptable because it, it goes so deeply against the grains of who you are. Maybe it was an action towards you or an event and it was a big one and it was so violating of what, what you could say is right and wrong, but you had to s sit in the cesspool of what was absolutely wrong and unfair about this and you'd have to be okay with it. <laughs> because that was your lesson in life because not everything in life has to be fair and not everything in life has to go your way and not everything in life has to have a beautiful ending to the story and sometimes it's it's a terrible ending to the story and sometimes that gets an applause it's like Romeo and Juliet what a terrible end to the story but you know it gets an applause <sighs> This is really effective. This is really reaching you. Because something is, uh, is changing about this bluebird. <sighs> Not that um, it's changing in color from blue to red or whatever. That it, it's, it's almost like it's not a blue jay anymore. It's more like a strange blue pigeon. Seems smaller than a pigeon, though. And it still has a red aura, but it doesn't even notice the red aura. It doesn't notice what's wrong. It's just, it doesn't even, it's not even looking for what's wrong or what's right. It's just existing. It's just choosing to exist. It's not judgmental of anything. It's not even perceptive enough to be judgmental. It's just existing. Hmm. This is the next difficulty, okay? It's weird. I see um, nails, really long, tall nails, um, six inches at least, maybe even a foot, but they're um, sturdily sitting upward, like they're not um, falling down or anything. It's almost like maybe they were hammered through a piece of wood. It, they're solidly sticking upright. 
and there's this a perfect space in between each nail and then the nails are moving forward okay and my hand goes up and down the tips of the nails so i'm just like running my hand up and down these nails and they're not falling over or anything and sometimes we want pain that's the next message because it's like um, being playful and then some jerk comes along and smashes my hand down on these nails and then laughs and walks away and it's like i didn't want this did i want this why was i even doing that in the first place and now my hand is in the nails oh my god you think there'd be more screaming involved but it's more like shock if anything an evaluation why did i put myself in this situation why was i even like playing with fire here with these nails and then who would have thought somebody would come along and just smash my hand down into them and laugh and walk away and now i have to move my hand up off of the nails and my hands full of holes and this is just absolutely disturbing i don't even have the mental capacity to even comprehend this this event here <laughs> it's like being in shock But the hands are never pulled up. Again, the message is you, you want pain and then the hands are pushed down. And there's this weird sensation of I'm going to get used to this. And I'm going to like this and I'm going to enjoy this. And, and there's just like a stabilization. And then there's a creation of another one so that the left hand can have some fun here. And then now I have two hands in these nails and it's like... I don't know what what this is disturbing to look at and it's painful but somehow i'm enjoying this and then i hear the sound um, somebody walking by saying you're a fool but it's different than that it's it feels like a a fat like a pot belly um what it I guess a little devil type um, creature, but it doesn't look like a devil. It has like a yellow feathered beard. Um, it has uh, big fat lips with big um, glossy lipstick as like really over exaggerated eyelashes. Like, I mean, we're talking like, <laughs> like really long, like, like six inches long, like really over exaggerated and oh this looks ridiculous and then they're telling you that you're a fool as they're coming around they have a big pot belly and it seemed to bounce around like it's just like a basketball and maybe a shirt or something but it's the skin it's very weird looking and so it's a question of like um who's who here who who is the fool here there's something foolish about this one that's calling you a fool in the scene okay but then um, what echoes back is this one calling you a fool is actually being themselves, and you are not being yourself. It's like, don't judge a book by its cover. They're being themselves, and you're not being yourself. And I say, I don't believe that. I don't believe they're being themselves either. I believe they're conveniently bouncing their belly around, walking around like a weirdo, I feel like they're not being themselves. I don't feel like they're naturally this weird. I feel like they're somehow represent some kind of meaning. Wait a second, is it a reflection of you? Maybe I should stop holding at such a high caliber. Maybe we need to really lower the bar here about you. We really need to be honest here about how low you've you've fallen. <laughs> I feel like that's the next message. Just hear me out, okay? We're gonna follow this thing all the way through. We're gonna figure this out. Cause I'm supposed to, to talk to you like you you're the um, dried up rubber band, nobody wants you, blah blah blah, you know. Um is that your reflection? Wow, I, I really raised the bar way too high with you. I need to really lower the bar. I was giving you way too much um, room to be, I guess, have more potential than this. I guess your potential really is that bad. Like, is it really that low? 
for some reason, when I talk to you this way, it, it actually moves energy in your heart and your emotional gut. And you're changing. You're kind of filling up with some kind of poisoning um, from the nails. But it's not like uh, infection or poison. It's, it's almost like you're chafing on the inside of your whole body. And it's a white um, speckling of dryness everywhere. It's, it's everywhere, all around you. It just keeps developing. It's kind of like um, a bit like skin rubbing on skin and like little like little um, pockets of like sca like scabs, you know, just but not like um, calluses maybe. It's just like, but it's irritated. It's not bleeding, but it's just kind of everywhere. And you're trying to live with your hands and the nails and you're trying to be happy with the decisions that you've made and be st you're stuck with the decisions that you made. You can't just take these decisions away, but now you're like this fool with this weird hand with nails in it and then the, the wood that hold the nails in place and all you can hear is this weirdo walking by calling you a fool and then you start to look at the reflection and you see yourself and you say, my God, I am a fool. You say, I, I really I really need to be honest at how far I've fallen. It's like how far the apple fell from the tree. I, you know, the tree of, um, I guess, uh, the most polished you. You really fell far from that tree. You are the worst version of yourself you could ever imagine. You, you could, you, I don't even know how you imagined it. I don't even know how you became it because it's that bad. It's really bad. And this is a this is the next bad bad space okay so you're in a bedroom and it stinks and it's full of a foul rotten smell it, i don't know why it reminds me apparently it reminds me of the smell of slugs i don't even know what slugs smell like but that's what comes to mind And you're half like dead, half alive. You've got a belly ache. You are like, Ugh, like, I'm not moving an inch. And it's a very foul environment in here. I mean, the walls aren't even put together right. There's cracks in the walls. You can see through into the outdoors. The there's a very old kind of blinds that is pulled down, that broken. The the glass in the window is broken. You're sprawled on a gross, nasty mattress. Hmm. Okay. We're just really, really, really settling into this, okay? We're not going to resist it. We're not going to look at it from afar. We're actually going to participate. We're going to be the worst case scenario here. And we're just going to really saturate ourselves into this scenario. You know, really feel present here. This low point, okay? And I just hear you stupid fool, you stupid, stupid fool. You're such a stupid fool. I say, okay, well, how many times do you wanna say it before you're done? And then you need to get up and open this window and you need to get your, you need to get your life together, come on. And it's like, you can sit there and say that around and around in a circle all day long, but eventually you're going to have to make a decision.
No, I guess you need to go to a lower point than this one. You're going to go to a much lower point than this one. Hmm. We could only wish to get back to that day with the snow squirrel and the opportunity to get excited when we tried to be too cool for that. We could only wish we could get back to that day. Now we're living in the reality of... It's almost like not being ourself and what that creates. It's almost like when you choose behaviors that create a certain look or feel or personality, but it's not really you. And you're just doing it because maybe you think it might be you, but it's not you. And all the weird things that that attracts, experiences that that attracts, that's just asking you to just finally just be you so you can stop torturing yourself. And you still keep resisting it because there's no way, there's no way that I'm not being me right now. Oh, there's nothing about this that's you. And you just want to be a representation of a reason why you're the worst person on the planet. Hey, congratulations. Here's your gold medal. You did it. Have you stooped low enough yet? All right, it's going to get bad, okay? It's pretty freaking bad. See a man who's punching you in the face left and right and left and right and left and right and you're strapped to a chair and you're just bruised up and bloody. And you've lost teeth at this point. He doesn't care what you say. He's just going to keep punching you again and again and again. It's fun. Keep insisting that these things are happening to you, but you chose to not be yourself. Now you're living the path of you not being yourself and what that looks like. It looks like a fight. It looks like pain. It looks like foolishness. It looks like longing for something you'll never be able to return to. Having to accept the way things changed and it's painful to accept that. Reaching a whole new low. The smell of snails and now this. Punching bag in a chair. Man, I really want to take you out of this low point here, but this is actually the right way we got to circulate through this because we're going to be honest about how deep this well goes, okay? Because these negative thoughts are have a very deep well that they belong to. And I will say, despite um, where we're going to leave off, we've actually made quite a huge step forward because what we're doing is transmuting deeper and deeper and deeper layers. So you're already going to notice an improvement from this. And I'm really glad that I can help you as much as I can because that, that's a bold request. And I think, I think it's, it's a good request, makes sense at the conscious level, but there's, I feel like a lot more depth to what's sparking that, what's attracting that. Okay. Loved connecting with you. Thank you so very much for this. Thank you so much for sharing. I hope you all have a great day.